Here's the thing about learning. It's for nerds. Awful, I hate it. Oh my god! Okay, so now I'm just going to go over the conclusion from part two of keywords. So one thing I just want to now conclude and just finish off that video is by saying like, so remember when it comes to keywords, you know, one, you know, find the keywords, um, you know, for, you know, you know, in the cards, you know, be able to find those keywords and two, read from bottom to top. And I think that's it. I think I've covered that. Now let's get to the topic of this video, which is activation condition. But before I get to the topic you know of that video of this video now it's time to just explain to you what i'm doing with all these tips and tricks videos and so you've seen part one you've seen now part two and now we are in part three so now that you're familiar with keywords now that you're familiar with colors you should be doing a lot less reading now you should be if you've practiced enough you should now have a good hold of the techniques that I've told you so you, sh you are ready for the next level and since that is the case let us talk about activation condition so what is activation condition well activation condition is the Yu-Gi-Oh law okay this is something that you cannot escape it is after all inevitable you know, you can't escape the Yu-Gi-Oh law of activation conditions. And why is that the case? Well, allow me to offer an example with this next series of cards. Okay? As you can see here. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the monster that you see in front of you. It's called Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Let's read that effect. You can also use one monster your opponent controls as material to link summon this card. If this card is link summoned, you can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. This link summoned card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target this card. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that special summons a monster or monsters from the graveyard quick effect, you can negate the activation. Key word here is link summon. This word right here is the activation requirements. This means if this card link summon is prevented, all the effects on this card will not activate. Why? Because for it to activate, it has to be successfully link summoned. This is what knowing activation condition can do for you. Please remember, activation condition is Yu-Gi-Oh law. Every card with an effect except normal or non-effect monsters follow this law. Yu-Gi-Oh law states this. When a card does not meet its activation condition, it will not activate. No exceptions. So, to elaborate on this, let's look at Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Right? So it says you can only use one monster your opponent controls as material to link summon this card. Now, that effect there can get you confused, right? Um, you know, and then afterwards it says if this card is link summoned. So what's important here is the second sentence, right? Of this card. Now, the second sentence is the activation condition of this card, not the first sentence, because it is speaking, because we see here in the past tense. You have to remember when you look at Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, the past tense, uh, that is used in a sentence will will tell you the activation condition of uh, that card so this therefore means that if you f if um, the player owning this card fails to link summon the previous sent the previous effect that as you can see in the first sentence will not apply because in order for that effect to apply the link summon has to be conducted do you see where we're going with this? So it's important to understand about activation condition. Now, this is the general rule of activation conditions, right? You will usually, 90% of the time, find them in the second sentence of every effect text on a monster. This will be the activation condition. 
right? The only times you're not going to find them there is, you guessed it, you will find them close to the keywords, the things that I was telling you before in part two in Tips and Tricks. Remember, I was telling you as your Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei to memorize and understand keywords. Now, here's where what I was telling you before comes into play. Finding where these keywords are is also where you will find the activation condition. If it's not um, where, you know, in the first sentence, then you will always find it near your keywords. And this obviously activation condition applies where, you know, there is summon condition as well of that monster. So it's usually tied to effect monsters that have a summon condition as well they'll usually ch uh, you'll usually chuck in there the activation condition of that card so bear that in mind okay that's it next very interesting let's talk about this card that you see in front of you it's called red eyes dark dragoon red eyes dark dragoon has the following effect dark cannot be destroyed by card effects. Neither player can target this card with card effects. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. And if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's original attack. You can use this effect a number of times up to the number of normal monsters used as fusion material for this card. Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can discard one card. Negate the activation and if you do destroy that card and if you do that this card gains 1000 attack points remember the key word technique i talked about in part two remember to apply it usually activation condition is found in the first sentence this rule while only will only apply if the monster has a summon condition. If not, the activation condition will usually be found near the keyword. As you can see here, quick effect, you can discard. Showcased in brackets, you can see the activation condition, which is you can discard. So how do you prevent its activation condition? It's simple, stop the owner from discarding, or in other words, keep the owner of this card handless. Please take note, preventing a card's activation does not necessarily mean negating a card. As long as you prevent its activation condition, it will become useless. Yes, as I've said so, fellow students, as long as you prevent its activation condition, the card will become useless. This is something that you need to remember when looking at cards. Remember when it comes to activation condition, you know, you need to be looking at those keywords and finding a way to prevent those keywords from resolving. That's what's important. Okay? That's really all I've got to say about this. Coincidence? I think not! So I've talked about, you know, the underworld goddess. And, you know, I've also talked about, um, you know, Dragoon, right? But let's look at the underworld goddess and go to that, um, you know, example again. So as I've said there, I'm just going to just skim through it really and not really go into detail in it. But I do say that, you know, it's what is its activation condition? As you know, I said here, ladies and gentlemen and fellow students of the Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei, it's summon condition, which will be tied to the activation condition is in order to activate that effect on summon, it needs to be successfully link summoned, right? So if it is not link summoned, it won't activate its effect. See? It's just that simple. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh law that I'm talking about. You know, every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh, except normal or non-effect monsters, follows the Yu-Gi-Oh law. Everything, and I mean everything with an effect, right, will follow the law of activation conditions. There is no escape. You cannot run from this law. You cannot hide from this law, you must accept this law. There is no escape. And this is important. You must accept this you must accept this Yu-Gi-Oh law if you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh at the higher levels. Right? Now allow me to give an example of how you know this law helps you in understanding Yu-Gi-Oh at a higher level. Let's talk about Dragoon, right? So Dragoon, what is Dragoon's activation condition? Well Obviously, I'll just summarize it, summarize it real quickly, but it is, you know, you discard a card in order to activate an effect to negate a card, right? 
So in essence, how will Dragoon activate its effect? Well, you need to discard a card. See? So that's the activation condition. Now, understanding this and knowing this is important. And so we can use various amounts of ways to stop the uh, Dragoon from activating. So one of those ways that we can do is, you know, stop your uh, the card from activating is by not allowing your opponent to discard. If they cannot discard, then they cannot activate. See, it's just that simple. Nothing complicated there. Um, so now let me just go on and continue, you know, as I go over this, you know, a little bit more. So, you know, a card we can have to stop Dragoon from activating is a card called Co Goblin of Greed. Now, Goblin of Greed is a fiend, you know, it's a level 4, it doesn't have a lot of attack, and it has a continuous effect saying neither player can discard cards. So, is this card a good card? No, by all intents and imagination, you know, it is considered a bad card. But that right there, students, is what I want to, what I want to say, you know? There is no such thing as a bad card. There is only activation conditions and cards that prevent them. Remember this, and remember this well, students, that Yu-Gi-Oh cards are solely designed to prevent activation conditions. There is no good or bad. There is only activation conditions. If a card prevents them, then it is a good card. You know? That is something that you need to accept. Yeah, this notion of we have bad cards, we have good cards, you know, get that mindset out of your mind. You know, if you want to become a better player, if you want to be playing you at the highest of levels and become a Yu-Gi-Oh master, you need to accept that there is no such thing as good or bad cards, only activation conditions and cards that prevent them. Besides, you know, a bad card today is a good card tomorrow. That's the way I see it anyway. At the end of the day, Goblin of Greed, yes, is a bad card. But is it really though? It's a card that prevents Dragoon from activating. And yes, currently right now, it is a bad card. But you could use it in an anti-meta deck. Now, I'm not saying, you know, go get yourself a Goblin of Greed. You know, I'm not saying like, you know, get this card immediately. But having this mindset, right, is that's how you get, hmm, let's say, spicy tech, right? Spicy tech in Yu-Gi-Oh, really, if I'm going to be straight with you and I'm going to be honest with you as a Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, is cards that prevent activation conditions. It's you, as a player, understanding that every card in Yu-Gi-Oh has an activation condition and you preventing it. That's it. It's just that simple. And please remember that every card in Yu-Gi-Oh has an activation condition, except normal or non-effect monsters. And every card follows that law. It is not a rule, it is the Yu-Gi-Oh law. You cannot, you, no card can escape this law. It doesn't matter what anyone tells you in a discussion. It doesn't matter, you know, about all these things. What matters when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh is activation condition. And if a card cannot meet its activation condition, then it cannot activate, you know? And this is how the game becomes easier. Because when you look at Yu-Gi-Oh! in this way, all of a sudden, all those complicated things that, you know, you know you're thinking about, all these complicated effects, you know, are they complicated? No, because they have an activation condition. And this is something that I want to, uh, you know, explain and I want to, you know, summarize, is that activation condition is always found on the first sentence of every effect monster, right? You will find it there, you know, without fail. You will always find the activation condition in the first two sentences of any effect card that you read, right? It is there, you know? And if it's not there, then it's usually part of the summon condition of set monster. But after that summon condition, it should be in the second, uh, se second sentence, you know? It should be there. So don't worry, don't despair, it's always there. You always find it in the first two sentences of any effect that you read, especially if it is a monster. 
when it is a spell or trap that's different they don't have they also have activation conditions they'll be in the first sentences as well but always remember that every card needs to meet its activation uh, condition I know it! Ah! okay here's the next card that you can see in front of you divine arsenal double a Zeus sky thunder once per turn, if an XYZ monster battle this turn, you can also XYZ summon Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus Sky Thunder by using one XYZ monster you control as material. Transfer its materials to this card. Quick effect, you can detach one material from two materials from this card. Send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. Once per turn, if another card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand deck or extra deck to this card as material as we can see with this card's card its summon can be done when an xyz monster has battled so my fellow students what its activation condition or rather summon condition you guessed it it is an xyz monster battling so if one prevents an xyz monster successfully battling why do I stress successful? Because the past tense has been used for describing battling. Leaving that aside, the important thing is the condition is related to battle. So no XYZ battling, no summon. It's just that simple. Remember students, preventing an activation condition is not difficult. Always focus on this aspect of cards. Rather than effects, this will make you into a Yu-Gi-Oh master. I shall provide another example for good measure. And this is one thing that I want to repeat again when it comes to activation condition. As you've seen there, it requires you to have an XYZ monster that successfully battled. Another way to stop, uh, you know, this card summon is to destroy the monster completely. This, uh, you know, divine, uh, you know, the hopefully if you're battling a monster if it's destroyed and there's no xyz monster on the field then divine arsenal double azs cannot be summoned because there is no xyz for it to overlay itself onto so that's another way to stop it by removing you know the monster from the field you know also by by you know denying the you know the battle phase you know or not have making sure that your opponent the person who owns this card, sorry, doesn't have a successful battle. Okay, let's move on to the next card. Alrighty. Look at the card in front of you. Super Polymerization. Discard one card. Fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck. Using monsters from either field as fusion material. Neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation. I know what you're thinking, students. This card and cards similar to this have no response. It's unbeatable. They are all unbeatable. As your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, I ask you, why are you afraid? Don't you remember what I've been saying all throughout this video? Every card except normal and non-effect monsters follow Yu-Gi-Oh law. It does not matter how powerful the card is. It doesn't matter how many words and elaborate it seems. When a card can't meet its activation condition, it won't activate. It's just that simple. So have no fear. Remember this. All cards in Yu-Gi-Oh except normal and non-effect monsters follow Yu-Gi-Oh law. No exceptions. Yes, my fellow students, always remember this. The law of activation condition is absolute. It is final. Nothing is above Yu-Gi-Oh law. Embrace it and accept it and use it for yourself. That is all I've got to say about this matter. Okay, so I think, you know, I've just gone over that. I've gone over, you know, the activation condition I've gone over, you know, why, um, you know, it is important and, you know, I, I call it the Yu-Gi-Oh law, but really that's what it is. And this is the secret, really. This is the secret that, of Yu-Gi-Oh. This, this right here, what I'm telling you right here, right now, right? This is what will make you into a Yu-Gi-Oh master. This is what, this is what it's all about. This is what makes the game easier, right? Is understanding this fact. Understanding 
that every card has an activation condition. And if you prevent that condition as a player, it won't activate. That is what's important. That is what matters, right? Once you have this mindset, and I really want to repeat, I want to hammer this home, right? Once you have this mindset, nothing, and I mean nothing in Yu-Gi-Oh! can make you afraid. There is, there is, you will have no fear. Because effects are all the same. Everything in Yu-Gi-Oh! is the same. This is what links everything together. Activation conditions. And... Obviously, when I'll be going to part 4 and part 5, I'll be talking about how we will use activation condition to answer even the most difficult questions, even the most toughest things that Yu-Gi-Oh! comes up with. Even the most complicated things like chaining, multiple effects, you know, all, all this, all, all of this, all of this, you know, all of this. Like, oh my god, what do I do <laughs> in this day? I can't understand. But don't worry. Don't despair as you need to sensei. Remember this, right? And remember this quote that I'll quote right now. There is no such thing as bad cards, only activation conditions and cards that prevent them. Repeat after me. There is no such thing as bad cards, only activation conditions and cards that prevent them. Remember this. This is your mantra. This is the way. There is no such thing as bad cards. Only, yes, cards that pre only activation conditions and cards that prevent them. It's just that simple. That's it. This is that's the secret. There's no, there's nothing else for me to say. Learn it, master it, and practice it, and you'll become a better player. Okay, you won't become a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master, I sort of lied there, but <laughs> eh, your teacher's swimming. But anyway, this will make you into a better player. 100%. Um, you know, 100%, you know, without no stretch of the imagination. Because that is the secret of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's activation conditions. Right? And it's understanding that cards, that you need to use cards to prevent activation conditions. Now, preventing activation conditions doesn't necessarily mean negation. This is a very big mistake. This is something I want to, you know, reiterate. Something that I want to um, touch upon when it comes to activation conditions, right? And I'm going to use the example of Dragoon, you know, to, to really showcase my point. Now, Dragoon, its activation condition is you discard a card to negate a card. Why did I offer the example of Goblin of Greed? Because Goblin of Greed, right, it, it has a continuous effect that neither player can discard cards. So again, it's not a negation effect, but however, it's an effect that prevents the activation of Dragoon. It, you, Dragoon loses, you know, those activation requirements. Because again, for Dragoon to activate, you, you need to discard a card. But if a card cannot be discarded, then it cannot activate its effect. Another way to stop Dragoon is you could be a little bit more inventive. One of those things is to understand that your opponent that to activate Dragoon, you need to have a hand. But if you have no hand, then you cannot activate the effect of Dragoon. So using a card like Summoning Curse, for example, Summoning Curse is a continuous spell that has the ability every time you every time you special summon, you know both players banish a card randomly from their hand right each time a special summon is conducted yeah so you see there again is a way to prevent dragoon you know again you minimize the hand what other thing can you do to create make your uh you know your, your opponent handless you could have you know general raiho you know a level six warrior water monster with the ability that every time your opponent activates a monster effect they discard that they cannot activate a monster effect unless by discarding a card so you know for them to go into you know dragoon they're going to have to go into virtue and Aconda and all other kinds of monsters and to go to all these plays they're gonna to have to discard cards by the time they get to dragoon 
they won't be able to activate its effect because they have no hand. And why don't they have a hand? Because they've been discarding due to the effect of General Raiho, which you have on the field. Remember, this is how you deal with problematic monsters. This is how you deal with things. Let's go in, go into a common uh, card you know we have in the game, like VFD. Again, how do we deal with VFD? VFD is an XYZ monster, correct? Correct. So in order for VFD to be summoned, and because it's a rank 9, you need two level uh, 9 monsters on the field. So how do you prevent it summon? But, but, but more often than yet, you need to not think how to prevent it summon. How do I ask? Do I say it? Do you prevent the activation condition of Dragoon? Oh, no, not Dragoon, sorry, of VFD. You know, of True King or Calamities. Well, first of all, just prevent it summon. One of the things you could do with this is Flying C. You can use Flying C, chuck it on your opponent's side of the board, and they cannot XYZ summon. Again, it meets the requirements, it stops the opponent XYZ summoning, and thus meaning they cannot activate, they cannot summon the FD. Another thing you could do is you could use level manipulation. You, you could use, uh, you know, a continuous trap that messes with the levels on your opponent's side of the, uh, of the field. Again, what is the condition to make the FD? The condition is they need two level nines. So, if they don't have two level nines, can they make VFD? No, they cannot. And as a result, that's what you need to do. You need to understand, right, that VFD is only but a monster. It's only but effects. As long as you prevent that activation condition, right, then it will not activate. It's just that simple. So, what have we talked about? We've talked about level manipulation to stop tricking of, of all calamities. We've talked about preventing the sum, right? You could do that. You could even go as far as, you know, just stopping X, XYZs from coming, uh, stopping special summoning altogether. But that, I feel, is a card we don't have yet, whatever, you know, things like that. Anyways. So that's there's an example of VFD. But let's talk about another card that sees a lot of play now, Divine Arsenal. You look at Divine Arsenal and you're intimidated, I'm sure. You are scared. You know. You're like, what am I going to do here? You know, we have the we have Divine Arsenal. But here's the thing. Let's look at Divine Arsenals and let's look at that first um, sentence there. What does it say, students? It says, what? Right? In order to be XYZ summoned, an XYZ monster has to have successfully battled. Do you see right there? Successfully battled. So in order to summon it, a battle has to have taken place and it has to have been successful. So what is the thing that you can do to prevent the summon of Divine Arsenal? Well, don't have, let your opponent, don't let your opponent have a successful battle. After all, it can Divine Arsenal can only be summoned as it states on the card that they have you have to successfully have battled. See, it's just that simple. It's not hard at all. It really isn't hard at all. It's not. You know, it's not. Remember, activation conditions exist on all cards. Right? Activation conditions can be found on the first and second sentence, sentences of all effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! except normal or non-effect monsters. Right? And once you read an activation condition, and once you prevent an activation condition, there is no worries. You have nothing to worry about. Remember, activation condition is easy to prevent. This is what matters. What matters is an activation condition. What matters is not the effect. And as you're going to be playing at higher levels of Yu-Gi-Oh, as you're going to be playing that, this is the information that you're going to need to know. This is the information that's going to be the most important to you. It's activation condition, right? Because at the end of the day, if a card cannot activate, is it a threat? It is not. And with that, 
I shall end it here as your Yu-Gi-Oh! Sensei. Take that fun fact with you as you will. After all, activation condition is Yu-Gi-Oh! Law. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. Um, hopefully I'll see, hopefully you know, you'll, you'll subscribe to this channel and uh, wait a couple of minutes and you'll, seconds, sorry, and you'll see some other videos that appear on my channel. Hope to see you soon and thank you.